welcome to Westchester Talk Radio. I'm John Marino. Glad to have you with us for our ongoing series here during COVID-19. The series is called Isolation Therapy, and Westchester Talk Radio is produced by Shark and Media. We are sponsored by lots of area hosts. For example, so many good people making us possible, like Entergy, the Indian Point Energy Center up there in Buchanan, White Plains Hospital, Wartburg Home Health and Rehabilitative Care in Mount Vernon, and in Forest Hills, Queens, and also Michael Labriola, Landscaping Design and Construction. Michael Labriola, the last name is the first name in landscaping, and by our good friends at Durante Rentals all throughout the tri-state area in New York, now in New Jersey, too, on Route 17 North in Hasbrook Heights and in the Danbury, Connecticut area as well. Our guest today is Dr. Diana Concannon. Dr. Diana Concannon to talk with us about pandemic psychology. Dr. Concannon is an associate provo out in California at the Alliant International University with six campuses in California and a number of campuses around the world. She's a psychologist. She works in disaster and emergency response in the Los Angeles County area. That is the most populous county in the country. She also trains first responders plus healthcare workers in psychological first aid and also with mental health and being a first responder and trying to make sure that first responders mentally are prepared for what they have to do, what they see, and what they might face. Dr. Con Cannon, first of all, we thank you for being part of Westchester Talk Radio. And how are you coping with isolation? So I think it's really important to separate um, kind of our social isolation, our physical isolation from, and from our social um, connections with each other. I think it's it's particularly important during this time that we stay socially connected and we have to be proactive about that. We have to be creative about that. Obviously, as we're doing now, the use of technology to connect is very important um, in different contexts to reach out to people in that way, to stay connected, whether it be by you know a Zoom or a Skype or any of those technologies, by phone, by text, group texts. I know people are having virtual coffees, virtual happy hours, um, virtual family meetings and gatherings, and virtual events even, in the event that they are unable to have those milestone achievements be recognized in real time. So I think people are showing a great deal of resilience and creativity during this time, and that's what's warranted. You bring up a good point that the fact that we are isolated physically doesn't mean we have to be isolated from the world, that we have ways to reach out. And I think after a few weeks, anywhere from two to four weeks, depending upon where you are around this country, how long you've been locked down, some people are still getting used to that idea. Yes, I think that is accurate. I think it's, it takes effort. I think it's, we are, I think, all resetting. It, it takes more effort to reach out in this manner. Um, but I, I believe that we are getting to a point now where it is becoming a part of our life. And the amazing thing about humans is that we do uh, reset and we do ritualize to new ways of life. And I'm seeing it more and more where people are reaching out with more frequency within these new and unusual ways. My first few days with this big shark behind me, it was kind of like, huh, you and me forever, I guess, right? Now I'm used to it. Even my father says to me, gee, it's great. And I have a number of media ventures I work with around the tri-state area. He said to me yesterday, it's great. You don't have to drive anywhere, huh? You kind of like this, right? And he's right about that. There's no doubt about that. You can get used to this. You'd like to talk about emotional contagion. What is that? Mm -hmm. So emotional contagion is this phenomenon that has been proven by research and science where we mimic each other. It's, it's been called a form of primitive empathy. It's how we engage, it's how we survive, it's how we predict each other's behavior. So we tend to mimic the emotions of the people around us for good and for ill. We saw this at the initial stages of the pandemic in things like the rush on food and paper goods, even on guns in California, on marijuana as well. We saw a rush on all of these things, this group behavior. 
Um, we also are seeing it in the applause that I know you're seeing in New York every night for the health care workers, where people are, are getting together to celebrate, and there is a contagion that has happened around that, where it grows. So it works both ways. Why that is important to note in times of social distancing is because if we are with individuals who are feeling anxious, which is a normal reaction during this time, we want to ensure that we calibrate the amount of exposure that we have to those individuals during the times that they are feeling anxiety. Of course, we want to support those that we're connected to when they're feeling anxious. We also, though, have to be very sensitive to the fact that we want to make sure that that anxiety does not permeate our own well-being, our own affect. So if we need to take a break from that exposure, we do so. Likewise, when we are feeling good, that is the time to reach out. I think many of us have a tendency to reach out to others when we are feeling challenged. Instead, we should know a about the impact that our positivity can have on others and really strive to reach out during those times when we are feeling more positive, knowing that we Social can make Social distancing difference. in New York yesterday, can you see this? In a park I cannot in New see York it, I'm City sorry. Yesterday? This is not social distancing and people aren't getting the idea, but we are talking with Dr. Diana Con cannon Alliant International University, six California campuses, another campuses in the San Diego area, I guess, out of those six. And also to you have uh, campuses around the world that you are a psychologist, you deal with pandemic psychology, everything going on psychologically now throughout this COVID-19 crisis. How do we mitigate psychologically and mentally these effects or potential effects of being locked up, cooped up because of COVID-19, or maybe like we were during Hurricane Sandy in this area after 9-11, after a major tornado in the Midwest or South. How do we deal with that? How do we make sure we stay us? I stay me, you stay you. Mm, that's, an, that's an excellent question. And I think every major event has the opportunity to contribute to who we are. And it does also knock us off balance. And I think we have to recognize that. Again, we call in psychological first aid, having these experiences, you know, normal reactions to abnormal events. I think first we have to recognize that we are likely going to have heightened responses to an event like this. This is a very aberrant event in even considering the other events that we have gone through before many of us. The duration of this event, the severity of this event, the uncertainty associated with this event are so amplified that it would be unusual for us to not have some extreme reactions internally at certain points. And so recognizing that and allowing for that and knowing that that is a normal experience during this time is really important. At the same time, knowing that we our normal routines have been disrupted and that we need to make new ones in order to stay connected to who we are um, is also important. So creating those new routines that represent and reflect those aspects of life that are important to us and that really um, reflect our priorities is also critically important. The other thing to recognize as well is for those that may be struggling beyond what is um, comfortable, those that might not be able to have good days alongside those that are maybe more anxiety ridden, um, it's important to reach out. You know, I will tell you in the mental health community, I have been so impressed by my colleagues who have mobilized and have gotten onto telehealth. So whether it's through, you know, employee assistance programs or county mental health or student assistance programs, there's a legion of mental health professionals out there who even, you know, short term, long term, however that's needed, if during this prolonged and protracted period, there's a feeling that one is not actually being able to regulate alone and friends and family just are not enough or they want an alternative source, there are resources out there and everyone should feel comfortable taking advantage of those. If we don't take advantage of some of at least of the things you've suggested mm -hmm. or figure out our own ways to do this, 
Might we be mentally stained forever because of what's going on now and this isolation with COVID-19? How do we recover if recovery is needed? So I think that most people do recover. I mean, if there's, if most people who experience what we know from you know, disaster mental health is that we are extremely resilient as humans and most people do have a, a response and a resilience. And actually adversity tends to strengthen most of us and has us go through what then when we resume what we would consider to be more normalcy in our lives. We have a strength that comes with us and we grow through it. And so that's really important to connect to and to look for opportunities where we can be intentional about strengthening ourselves emotionally, physically, mentally. Um, and so I think that that is really a, a key element in this is to intentionally look for those opportunities even within this adversity in order to strengthen us. Dr. Diana Con cannon Alliant International University, six campuses in California, several others around the world, a renowned psychologist who is helping us deal with pandemic contagion here in our isolation therapy series at Westchester Talk Radio. Dr. Con cannon we thank you and stay safe. Westchester you as well. Talk. Thank yep. you. Thank you very much, Dr. Con Cannon. Westchester Talk Radio, produced by Shark Media, sponsored by Entergy, the Indian Point Energy Center in Buchanan, White Plains Hospital, also the Wartburg Home Health and Rehabilitative Care Centers in Mount Vernon and in Forest Hills, Queens, Michael Labriola Landscaping Design and Construction, Labriola, the last name is the first name in landscaping, and by Durante Rentals, strategically located around the tri-state area in New York, New Jersey, and in southwestern Connecticut. I'm John Marino. We are Westchester Talk Radio at westchestertalkradio.com. Westchestertalkradio.com, all one word.